This is our fifth part of our psychometric, the study of air and air movement video series. If you have not watched parts one through four, I would suggest you do go back and revisit those before moving on to part five. They, they do build upon each other and it will just make it a whole lot easier to understand. So anyway, let's talk about air duct work and airflow through an AC or heating system. First of all, the basis is it's measured in cubic feet per minute. This is a volume of air, cubic feet, per unit of time. It's expressed as CFM or foot to the third power over minutes. Now, the CFM is actually a very simple calculation. It's the velocity of the air, that's the speed of the air, times the area of duct that the air is in. So velocity is measured in feet per minute. The area is a cross-sectional area of the duct. Area is measured in square feet. So let's take a look at one example here. We've measured our air velocity, and we're going to get into how to do that in a future video, but you measure your air velocity. We've measured it at 500 feet per minute. We have a duct measurement of 1 by 2. So our area is 1 times 2 is 2 because of the 1. Okay, so the airflow is the velocity times the area. In this example, at 500 feet per minute with a 1 by 2 duct, our airflow is 1,000 CFM. Velocity times area. So here we have another example. We know our velocity is 600 feet per minute because, again, we have measured that. Our duct measurement is 24 by 24. So let's take this. Okay, then we multiply it out. 24 by 24 cross-sectional area is 576 inches squared. We have to get this to feet, to square feet. So we know there's 144 square inches in a square foot. We take it to cross-sectional area, four square feet. Would have been almost easier just to do it there, but I understand why they're doing it in this example. You don't always have even numbers. We have an airflow CFM of velocity times the area. So we have 600 feet per minute times four square feet. So our airflow is 2,400 CFM in this example. Again, we measure the CFM, we measure the duct work, we calculate what our airflow is. Improper airflow can cause a lot of problems in an HVAC system. You can have evaporator coil freeze-ups. We can have liquid refrigerant flooding back to the compressor, and that will kill a compressor. We can have overheated heat exchangers. Again, it will kill a heat exchanger. We can have inadequate heating or cooling. We can have inadequate air filtration. We can end up with blower motors overheating and failing. We can have humidity problems, especially in the southern part of the country. We can have mold and other biological growth in the ductwork. We can have condensate flooding. Airflow affects how well the condensate drains. And finally, we have occupant discomfort. But all of this, all of these issues can be attributed at times to improper airflow. So the basic parts of an air distribution system is a return duct, a return grill, the air filter, the air handler, which includes a blower and a coil. You have your main supply duct, you have branch ducts, you have supply outlets, registers, and grills. So if we do the pictorial representation of all these parts, we have our return air, we have our air handler, we have our main supply duct, and then we have our supply branches with supply outlets. Now there's a couple different types of duct systems out there, but let's talk about, we're going to talk about the basic one first, which is called an extended, extended plenum systems. So Let's say we have our return opening. That's our return, like our filter grill or grill in the wall or ceiling. The airflow is 500 feet per minute. It goes into the return duct, and the airflow speeds up in that return duct to about 800 feet per minute. It goes through our air handler that has our blower, our coil, and everything else. comes out of the 
the air handler into a main supply duct at a thousand feet per minute, roughly. Then it goes into each of the supply branches and we want to maintain about a 600 feet per minute flow. And our, our supply outlet at the register outlet, we want five between five and 750 feet per minute. So you'll notice that the, we might have one quantity of air, but as we move down, we're gonna have different quantities based on duct sizes. But our feet per minute is what we're looking for. So the extended plenum air distribution system, which is what I just showed you, is a very common duct configuration. The main supply duct extends out further from the air handler. The cross-sectional area, the main supply duct, does not change, so it's one size. So if at the air handler it's 48 by, or let's say 24 by 36, it is going to be that size all the way down through the end of the duct. The air velocity drops greatly as the end of the duct run is reached, okay, because there's nothing going on to maintain velocity. So this is an example of an extended plenum system. Let's assume a cross-sectional area of two square feet all the way through of the ductwork, okay? So our supply of velocity is 700 feet per minute. This gives us 1,400 because, again, two square feet, 700 times two is 1,400. Okay, so we know our supply velocity is 1,400 CF, our supply quantity is 1,400 CFM. We have to break this into four, so each register is getting 350 CFM. 1,400 divided by four is 350. So it's a constant cross-sectional. That's an extended plenum system. Now there's another type of system we'll talk about in the next part that actually is a little bit more efficient. So velocity in the duct section B to C, okay, here is 10,000 or 1,050 CFM divided by two square feet, okay? So we know our velocity here is 525 feet per minute. Okay, because we've lost the 1350 here, or the 350 here. We're still talking about the same one we had previously. Here, velocity in section C to D, we now are only left with 700 CFM, because again, we've taken off the 350. Okay, so 1050 minus 350, I only have 700 CFM. So here we have 700, 700 CFM divided by the two square feet gives me a lot of velocity of 350 feet per minute. So let's jump back here. Okay, we have my, we have my duct sections here. Okay, we have A to B, B to C, C to D. And then after D, we basically just have that single register left. Okay, so between B and C, okay, which is this area right here, that's what this is showing. I'm losing 1,400 minus 350, so I only have left in this area 1050. I know it's 525 feet per minute. Then we go to my next one, which is after point C to D. So if we look at my whole run here, we're talking this area right there between C and D. I have my 1050. Okay, I'm losing 350. So what I have remaining is 700 CFM. Divide that by my two square feet. My velocity here between C and D is 350 feet per minute. So what you're seeing is as the end of the duct is reached, as my branches go, I continue to lose velocity in this system. I may maintain my airflow to what I need, but I'm losing my velocity, losing the speed. 
Okay. So now we have the end of the duct reached. I have my, after my point D, okay, I have the takeoffs for B and B2. So let's go back. I'll show you it here. We're talking these two takeoffs right here. Okay. So each of these is 350. So I have 700 CFM coming in. I have 350 going into B1, and that remains 350 B2. So each of these, if I say this is a two square foot duct, 350 divided by two is 175 feet per minute. So B1 and B2 is all the way at the end of my duct system, and it's gonna have very small velocities. Okay. So again, the extended plenum system, which is this one that we're talking about here, here's the representation of it. But if I go here, okay, I'm going to have the strongest airflow out of my first vent here. And then as I go to the end, I may have the quantity, but I'm not going to have the speed of the airflow. Okay, so depending on the system, you may hear airflow out of here, but you may not hear airflow out of here. So the only way to be sure is to measure it. Okay, hopefully that makes a little sense. But your velocity drops as you go forward. That's the extended plenum system. One size ductwork fits all. It's very, very frequent, especially if you're dealing with ductboard and not sheet metal.